beginning of the moments where no one really seems that worried. You know, yeah. and maybe maybe he needs a more urgent communication than what Virgil gives him. Maybe he needs to be told that there are apes that are dead. There, he needs to be reminded of these kind of things and known, but it's weird. Uh, uh, Roddy does a real good job moving his ape hairline. Yeah, he does. He's doing this number. I can do it too. <laughs> that's a, There's a documentary about John Belushi uh, that's on Showtime, and they show some of his auditions for Saturday Night Live. Uh-huh. And one of the things he does is look, and he's like, raise this eyebrow, this one. He's just make it's the fact that he has such control over his face. You put the ape makeup on John Belushi, he might have been... Hey. He might have been a great ape. They, they would have made him a, an orangutan, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. All right, I, has anyone got anything else? No, I was going to say, I just I feel like the the Virgil updating Caesar on what's going on is necessary. I just was left wanting from their interaction. Something was something was missing for me. Something Caesar's been a leader up to this point in driving mm-hmm. so much stuff that for him to become so passive suddenly was just a little bit of a letdown. I mean, I didn't need like him to suddenly change, you know, from right. mourning his son. I just needed a better dialogue, something, something from him to make it more impassioned why he right. has to stay. Something that came of mind. I'm sitting here trying to think of moments in, in pop culture that have worked like this. You think of go back in game of Thrones at the very first from Brent. Is it Brandon? Brandon that's pushed out the window. Yeah, Brandon. And, you know, and Ned is take, ha, has to be taken away to go with the king. Um, Kate, is that Catelyn? Catelyn. Cat, sits by his side. Yet there are things that happen, and they do things to draw her away. She is interacting with that world. She, she is 100% devoted to that child laying in that bed. Yet whenever someone lights that place on fire, and it's meant to draw away so they can mm-hmm. try and kill him, she goes with the moment. She understands. And it, it she's creates... Because she's also in charge when right. her husband's And it gone. creates yeah. more tension, the fact that she's in the two places at once. And I think this moment's begging for Caesar to be that torn apart right. leader. And he's not. And I don't blame Roddy for this. No. I don't... I mean, if you're going to put blame on it, it's got to go to the screenwriters and the director. Well, Somebody's got to understand there's got to be more and, to this. And see, Caesar's not given any dialogue other than a little bit we heard. You know, right. McDonald. I, guess, I can't leave my son. He needs yeah. me. Right. And it, he, he, we needed, we, we've got this amazing actor here and we're losing him to this moment when, exactly. when we should be seeing more of him. Is that not the truth of these movies? You know, I, I, escape has great stuff for Roddy to do, but how many times have these movies almost gone to him and say, um, by the way, could you give us a little gravitas? It's not really here in the story. You give it to us. And the one time that he needs the story to dictate it, it fails him. Mm-hmm. Because if imagine if Roddy had been given a moment like that where he could be the Catelyn Stark who's torn. My son, I love my son, but this has to be done. He deserves that. He really does. Well, I mean, yeah. So, so this is this is an element to a uh, that you would have in a play where the actor where the actor kind of talks out loud about mm-hmm. the situation they're going through and here he could talk to Virgil about mm-hmm. what's happening to him emotionally mm-hmm. uh, it, it's it's lacking it just needs something there for him yeah Lisa you're tearing me apart oh hi Mark am I the only one that's seen the room okay never mind. I, I've seen it but it's been so long which one that really bad movie the room the room that one guy wrote and directed and financed himself himself and it's like horrifically bad but now it's become a cult film and then james and made franco a, made a making like the a, artist is that what that was, was called something like that uh that was a not a documentary but a fictionalization of making of that movie richard if you've not seen it i'm going to Tom, beg of Tommy you why so that's the guy's name i'm gonna beg of you okay and what i would actually suggest is actually see the james franco movie about it first so you get more of a perspective of what it was, and then when you watch it, you'll be like, "Oh my God, that's one of the worst things I've ever seen!" But it's wonderful because of it. I, I, all right, all right. I don't think I've seen it. I've seen it. We may have to pull up the trailer and let Richard see a trailer because okay, it yeah. is like, wow. Maybe, maybe. No. Nah. Anyway, okay. anyway, that's Sorry. it. We'll be back tomorrow, uh, and we'll do our best to not talk about buttholes or the artist. <laughs> Everyone, have a great day. Bye, bye, everybody. The minute of the age.